Now folks, let me tell you what we're going to do next. What we're going to do next is we're going to intersect the OK land cover, slopes, and elevation with the OK near streams and near roads layers. Okay, So as a result, we'll get all five criteria. But this is a really important part. Notice my data frame. My data frame all along has been in UTM, North American Datum of 1983, Zone 14N. I'm in eastern Nebraska, and I projected it at the beginning to UTM. But as I've gone along and created these layers, notice that my roads hydro intersect. Let's take a look at the data there. Look at properties. It's undefined. The coordinate system is undefined. Hmm. Interesting. And also, my land cover, slopes, and elevation layer. Let's look at that as well. This one says it's in GCS North American Datum 1983. It doesn't say UTM at all. So here's the problem. If I were to run an intersect command at this point, right? how do we do that? We go over here to Windows Search, and we can run an intersect command. If I run an intersect command, which I've done, but I just wanted to show you what happens when your layers are unprojected or in a different projection and your data frame is in one projection, what you're going to get. So if I run an intersect with the two layers that I've identified, this one and the Rhodes Hydro intersect, okay, that one, if I run an intersect on those two layers, what I'm going to get is as follows. I'm going to get a, a layer that's called Final Sites. And let's go to Final Sites and open the attribute table. There's no attributes in there. Let's go ahead and zoom to the Final Sites. There's nothing in Final Sites. Let's look at the projection of Final Sites. North American Datum of 1983. The point is, is that if you're overlaying data, you need to be aware of the projection of the individual data layers in your in your overlay, right? If especially intersect operation like this. What if these are in different coordinate spaces? It's not going to intersect anything and as you can see right here, there's nothing in the results. However, if I then if I projected the data first and then run an intersect, this is what we're going to get. First of all, let me show you my projected layers. What I did was in each of these, I went to data and then export data. So in export data, I'm going to say I want to export it into the data frame. Remember, the data frame is in UTM NAD83. So as a result of running that twice, I have the same exact layers, but now I've got a UTM, and I've even named it UTM, for my OK elevations, slopes, and land cover. And I also have a UTM layer for roads, hydro, and intersect. So these are the two things here. And let me go ahead and zoom in on each one of these layers so you can see what I've got here. So I've got that one. Let me just change this to a slightly different color. How about we make that one yellow? OK, so now I've got this here. And let's go ahead and zoom out so I can see some other, other things here. So I know I'm going to have some areas that intersect. As you can see, there's little bits here that actually fall into both areas. Uh, let's go ahead and find one of those. We've got some areas that uh, that intersect. Now I've changed the color of the land cover, slopes, and elevations so I can see the places where they intersect my areas near roads and near hydro. And you can see these yellow areas on top of the sort of the pale yellow. Those are the areas that that are intersecting. So my final, when I run the intersect command, which is right here, if I intersect the UTM layers, so in this case, I'm going to select my two UTM layers, my roads hydro intersect, and then also my elevation slope land cover, and then I output that into a shape file. What I get is this, final sites UTM. And you can see that those dark blue areas correspond to the areas, I'm going to toggle this on and off, where those two layers intersect. Okay, So that's a very important thing to know what projection your inputs are in any kind of overlay operation, regardless of what the data frame says. Remember the, the ability of a GIS like ArcGIS to 
on the fly reproject the data so it's in the looks like it's in the same coordinate space and you can work with it you know that's all fine and that's really valuable and helpful but it also means that you have to be extra diligent in knowing what projection your individual data layers are so that when you run a, an overlay operation like an intersect you're getting some significant output in this case I now have final sites that are actually close to roads close to hydro the elevation is okay the slope is okay and the land cover is okay so I'm all set this is my areas of for my final sites for my wildfire observation towers.